Hello, and welcome to the Pike Market Senior Center. I'm Jeannie Falls, the Executive Director, and it's my pleasure to get to introduce our mayor, who has made a commitment to uh, making Seattle an age-friendly city. That, that's an initiative that was sponsored by AARP and the World Health Organization to make sure that our neighborhoods are accessible and enjoyable for all ages. And it's perfect that um, this is happening down here because the Pike Place Market is actually a little microcosm of an age-friendly community. We have low-income housing for seniors. We have a clinic. We have a senior center. We have a food bank. Um, there's a childcare um, facility with sliding scale. And it's also appropriate because our mayor is a champion of uh, new strategies and funding that help um, homeless people find housing, which is one of the big issues for our seniors. So I welcome you to Thank the Pike Market Senior Center. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, good morning. It is great to be back at Pike Place Market, and it's good to see my friends here at, at the Senior Center. You know, one of the great things about coming here is this group of seniors is some of the most honest people I know in Seattle because they just told me I look so much better in real life than I do on TV. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I do. Anyway, you know, I have spent um, my time as mayor stressing the issue of equity in Seattle. We focus on passing policies that make Seattle a more equitable city. Whether it's dealing with police accountability and biased policing, whether it's dealing with funding programs like pre-K that give our kids a better chance, whether it's increasing transit funding, which is so important for so many people in their ability to get to work, whether it's the investments that we have made for immigrants and refugees in this very, very difficult time for them. But there's another group that we also need to do a better job about creating a more equitable city for, and that's our seniors in the city of Seattle. You know, I've had the privilege, I had the privilege for 18 years to represent Pike Place Park at Market as part of my legislative district. So in many ways, I'm coming back home. And one of the things I was able to work on is obtain about 90% of the funding from the state that we needed for the markets uh, a child care center, which is one of the great models, I think, of a child care center in the city. So I'm glad to be back here, not talking just about how we help people uh, who are three and four or one or two, but how we help people who are seniors, how we help people who are my age. <laughs> and we only have to look at the challenges we face. Tomorrow, or very soon, we could see the Affordable Care Act Obamacare overturn. That will have a devastating effect on seniors. Seniors risk seeing their health care premiums rise by as much as 25 percent, among other challenges they face with the budget cuts we see coming from Washington, D.C. So we are here once again to send a different message than the one we hear from Washington, D.C. We don't think you deal get to equity, and we don't think you get a vibrant economy unless you're willing to invest in people who are on the margins. Last summer, I was so proud that we worked with AARP and received the World Health, uh, World Health Organization's designation as a senior-friendly city, but we need to do more. Today, nearly 20% of King County residents are 60 or, over, or older, including me, and baby boomers, my generation, are retiring in increasing numbers. I want to thank Councilmember Bagshaw, who could not be with us today, for the work that she will be doing on highlighting our need to do more for seniors on the council. The challenges are clear. 63% of older renters spend more than 30% of their income on housing. That basically puts those seniors in poverty. There are the challenges in a city like ours with hills to be sure that our buses, our sidewalks, our parks, and our crosswalks are ones that seniors can get across and use easily. And while Seattle is better than most cities, we can do better. 
Seniors often are left isolated, which can lead to a whole series of other problems. We need to be sure that we're investing in those programs for our seniors that allow them not to live in isolation. But most, most importantly, I want to announce two initiatives that we're launching today. First, as you know, the city has a utility discount program, one of the lowest in the nation. And we've been able to dub, double the number of individuals in that. But we can actually help seniors have a more affordable life by signing up more seniors for that program. And I'm happy to be joined by our King County Assessor, uh, John Arthur Wilson, to announce a partnership with the county to dramatically increase the number of seniors who are qualified for the King County property tax exemption. There are actually about 9,000 seniors in this city who are qualified for those two programs, and we only have about 1,500 households signed up. So these initiatives will seek to register all 9,000 th of those individuals, creating a cheaper property uh, costs as well as utility costs. We are committing to working with the assessor and with AARP to make sure that we can find ways to get seniors signed up on these programs. We're committing $200,000 in 2017 for a series of initiatives that will also help seniors to make sure that we fund those cen centers that make sure that seniors aren't isolated, to fund programs that are innovative for seniors, to additional funds for transportation options, and fund technology so that seniors can access it and that it meets the needs of seniors. Because quite honestly, some of us need a different way of communicating than some of the young people like this all day long. See, I got an all right for that one, so. so but the other important thing is we need to listen to seniors. When we designed our pre-K program for three and four year olds, we spent a year listening to the parents and the educators. So we need to listen to seniors. I've had the opportunity twice to meet with our African American Seniors Association, and I will be soon meeting at once again with our Immigrant and Refugee Seniors Association. We'll have a forum with LGBT seniors as well as with senior women's. We will listen to what they say their challenges are, and we will craft our programs to meet their needs. This commitment to social equity for seniors is also an issue of race. By any number that you look at, by any, any statistic that you look at, whether it's homelessness or those who are living in poverty, it is seniors of color who we need to zero in on particular. But there are practical things, again, I want to emphasize. Whether we're designing our pedestrian master plan or we're designing um, programs with our bus services at King County, we need to be sure that we design those so that they work for all ages. And quite honestly, another commitment I made is that we need to be sure that we are designing our bike system, not just for young people in their 20s, for hipsters, but also for people who are, then the hipsters are laughing, but also for people of all ages and all abilities. Um, so that we, again, are not just about one thing for one group of people, but we're a city for everybody. So with that, it is my great honor, and before I do this introduction, uh, Jeannie, thank you for your uh, uh, warm introduction, and thank you to the market once again for welcoming me back. But with that, it's my um, great honor to introduce somebody who's a, a, a real leader on the issue of equity, and that's our King County Assessor, John Wilson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here today because this is a wonderful example of, of local government working together, uh, of the city and the county partnering and, and making sure in an equity and social justice lens we're reaching out to people. You know, as I toured the county, in particular the city over the last year, I found literally hundreds if not thousands of people who were unaware either of the senior exemption program or of the utility exemption program. And it made sense. We reached out, both the mayor and I, to, uh, and with our staffs to talk about there's got to be some way we can work together. And I'm very pleased today that with this memorandum of understanding, we're committed to moving forward. Um, I, I also want to put this in very human terms. Uh, you know, uh, last Labor Day, I was at the Labor Day picnic traditionally held, and a retired postal worker came up to me. And he said, you know, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to stay in my house. I've lived in Seattle virtually all my life. But I got my senior exemption the other week. 
I can stay in Seattle. And there was a smile on him that was worth a thousand, a million dollars. It was somebody who saw that government stepped up, connected, and delivered for him. And that's what we're trying to do here. We know, as the mayor suggested, that, that countywide there are thousands of people that don't know about the program. We know that literally in Seattle there's an opportunity for us to enroll thousands more. So we're going to roll up our shirt sleeves in the next few weeks, next few months and year, and we're going to get those people registered. I'm very proud to report already that in terms of applications this past year, we took a record number of 5,000 applications for the senior exemption, which if we bring them all finally into enrollment, would increase the program's enrollment by 25 percent. That's government delivering, being innovative, collaborative, and it's the kind of government we all long to, to, to mirror and serve. On that note, I want to introduce Catherine Lester to talk a little bit about the Seattle Human Services Department. Catherine? Good morning, everyone. My name is Catherine Lester. I'm the Human Services Director for the City of Seattle. Uh, thank you to Mayor Murray for your leadership uh, and commitment to equity and an inclusive community here in Seattle. Thank you to the King County Assessor and Pike Place Market Senior Center for your partnership. And I also want to thank my colleagues at the Human Services Department, many of whom are here today. Uh, it's just truly humbling to be able to work alongside you every day and to witness your dedication to this community. So I'm super excited for today's official launch of Age Friendly Seattle. The Human Services Department is the planning, grant making, and direct service entity on behalf of the city's investments into our local safety net. And one of our key impact priorities is in making sure that we're promoting healthy aging and that people in this community can live, older adults can live in a way that is healthy and um, promotes their wellness and also can age in place. And age friendly is very much a critical element to making this priority a reality. This morning you heard from our mayor about the early commitments that the city is making. Things like improving access to human services and housing. Things like improving uh, opportunities for making capital <laughs> improvements as well as transit option expansion. And then also making technology available. We will also be piloting an innovation fund as a way to test new ideas to really kind of help us think and act creatively about how we support our age-friendly vision. So the people that I work with every day know that I really like words and I like quotes. I find them very inspiring and energizing. They also know that my own personal experiences as a woman and a woman of color deeply shapes and intimately shapes everything that I do professionally. So I wanna just end my remarks by sharing with you a very, very simple quote. Uh, it reminds me of my 98-year-old grandmother, Lily May, and I'm truly blessed to still have her in my life, um, in this world, I should say. And she's taught me so much about the lessons of what it means to not only age, but to live graciously and to do so um, in a way that is really uh, true to who I am. And so that quote is, live life to the fullest and focus on the positive. So we, we're also joined by um, uh, the superintendent of the Seattle Parks Department, Jesus Aguirre, the director of Seattle IT, Michael Matt Miller. Um, I'm sure there are other department heads I'm missing, but I just want to point them out to you. So I think we're ready for questions. Okay. Good press conference. Thank you very much. No, are there was? <laughs> and and seniors, I'll come back for a lunch, and we'll have a chance to do a question and answer. Then, any any questions that any of you have? Okay. Thank you all for coming this morning. This is one of the ways that we will make Seattle an equitable city. And again, uh, Assessor uh, John Arthur Wilson, thank you again for your leadership. Okay, have a good day.